At Wildfed Photography, the word client is becoming a thing of the past. We are now happily welcoming members to enjoy having their family histories captured so that they can have gorgeous pieces of family art to look back on and treasure in this lifetime and by future generations. If you'd like to learn more about becoming a member, you can visit our website at wellfedphotography.com slash membership or download our membership brochure in the link provided. Now we hope you enjoyed the episode. Hi everyone, Ariana here from Wellfed Photography and I'm so delighted to be joined by Shane Lindsay, AKA the dad pal, who is the first male doula in Ireland. We're gonna get into that and um, his own journey. But first, Shane, could you just let us know a bit about yourself? Yeah, absolutely, Ariana. And firstly, thanks so much for, for having me on and uh, inviting me in, it's, it's, it's great. Uh, I think we, we just had a quick discussion beforehand about the benefits of social media. And I think this is uh, the the perfect showing of, of the benefits of it and connecting with like-minded people and making a difference and kind of being able to spread whatever positivity you can. And I think your website and the work that you're doing is, is exactly that and something that I'm definitely aspiring to do. So that's what, uh, well, thank you so much for having me on. Um, yeah, just a, a quick bit about myself. Um, my name is Shane uh, Lindsay. Originally, I'm from Dublin, living in Dublin. Um, I'm twenty. I'm thirty now. I just t- turned thirty there uh, only a few weeks ago, and um, I have a little boy, a little ten-month boy called Ezra, um, who is a joy and who's been such a a, a, a massive change uh, in my life i suppose and um, you know i i work uh, a regular job uh, in, in recruitment and it was back in february where i was going for a run actually and i was thinking to myself i wouldn't mind like obviously we're all in lockdown and i wanted to do something creative uh, i want to do something to kind of m- make a change i think we all have that in us to want to um, make a difference and uh, I, th- I was thinking maybe set up an Instagram page and then what what am I interested in you know I'm interested in loads of different things but I think the one thing that I could really say for sure that I'm interested in and passionate about and I could do you know over and over and over again is talk about my son as most parents can you know Jesus they can go on and on and on about their about their children so I set up an Instagram page um, mainly with the we're trying to target dads uh, and I suppose talk about the, the mistakes that I made the tips that I have and how it may uh, be of some benefit to some people um, and so it, they're just quick posts I, f- I find that I'm, I'm a um, I'm I'm very into visuals and uh, the posts are just kind of quick six uh, pictures and a quick kind of explanation uh, to go with it and it could be about anything really to do with having a, a kid and from from you know their health stuff that you can buy um you know I, I, and then the more i start doing it the more it kind of opened me up to you know having a child it, it's such a huge thing but jesus it you know the the family dynamic of the whole thing is as important and The more I kind of delved into it, the more I found that I think focus on the family dynamic can be um, neglected slightly, not massively, but slightly because focus is on baby. And obviously it has to be, I get that it's priority number one, but sometimes you do have to work on those foundations as to the reason why baby's here and, and, and work on that, make sure that that's as healthy as it can in order to, to progress. So, um, you know stuff like relationship health um the postpartum phase from from ter- in terms of supporting your partner um uh your own health your own physical health um eating well drinking enough water um and i suppose the, the one post actually that always comes to my mind is i put one up about uh, dad's looking tired because i find myself I, I look tired so much all the time and I've researched a few different creams that you can get as a dad, you know, just to <laughs> maybe hope, you know, have yourself not look as tired. Because the one thing that I found is that females are great for talking about this kind of stuff and helping each other out. 
uh, whereas men tend not to. Um, so that's that's the journey that I'm on. I then, as I said, the more I looked into it, um, I well, my, my partner Leah actually sent me a link to uh, a postpartum doula training course, um, and it was right up my alley, really, for what I was trying to do. So I signed up for that. I've completed it. I hope to have my cert in hopefully next week or so, just when restrictions kind of ease a little bit. And again, just from all the the, the talk within that group, there was about 30 of us that done it. Um, and geez, the, the feedback that I got from, uh, obviously they're, they're all um, females, but they're, they're as welcoming as anything. And, you know, they were saying that, you know, dads need a lot of support as well. There's that there is a niche out there. So I think that um just by getting my cert being able to actually offer services um is kind of what I'd like to do. And I suppose being able to offer a service as a doula to primarily the dad, but also to the to the family dynamic, because I'm also conscious that there are certain things that I can do towards the, the mother. But naturally enough, a mother is probably going to be a little bit more comfortable maybe with a female doula, and that's absolutely fine. But maybe a dad would be more comfortable with a male doula. So we'll just have to wait and see. So uh, that's that's the journey that I'm on. And uh, again, as I say, since since uh, the start of all this, been connecting with so many people through Instagram, doing podcasts. We've done a few events with a few other doulas. They've been just great, really welcoming to me. And really excited to kind of see a different side of it and see it, see I suppose, uh, parenthood from a from all perspectives, and I think that that's the key. So uh, yeah. that's a little bit about myself. Well, thank you for sharing that, and it, it is so important. You know, I'm a mother of two, and when we had our son, my husband and I, I didn't realize how lonely it really was for him. He's the only one of all his friends that's like married for the first thing, and also the only one that is a dad. So he didn't really have like other dad friends. He didn't have someone else to talk with about these things. And I was so immersed in motherhood. You know, I was immersed in like feeding and taking care of my son. And he was off at work and would come home and cook meals to try to help out and contribute in any way that he could. But I didn't realize just how much that that first probably year or so was a bit lonely for him, you know, and luckily I found out later and you know, we've been able to make adjustments with having our second child, but I think it's so important to have a male's perspective and to have someone like yourself who can be a source of support as well. So thank you for that firstly. And the other thing that I wanted to say is I know you mentioned that your journey into becoming a father was very eye-opening. So can you just speak on why it was so eye-opening for you and maybe a few main things that your eyes were open to? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I suppose the first thing is I remember when Leah was maybe six months pregnant, I said to Leah, when when our kid is six months old, we're going to look back at it and we're going to say, how easy was that? And I couldn't have been more wrong <laughs> <laughs> now that I think, you know, and, and uh, you know, it's it's as though, you know, um, I think that a lot of um, stuff that you read out there, it's all the the positives and it's all the the beautiful pictures of, uh, of of parenthood, and you don't really hear too much about the the, the, the sleepless nights and the the worry. And I suppose the biggest eye opening thing for me was, um, and again, I'm only talking about it from from a dad's perspective. I think that from a mother's perspective, the feelings that I have is is emphasized, you know, tenfold just because of just just the natural way that that, that, that maternal instinct that a mother would have um the, the responsibility of of having a child and kind of bringing the child home and kind of knowing that you're it's 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 sole provider um but i suppose the biggest one is the postpartum period and the the struggles that i believe a mother goes through from the time she walks into a hospital feeling as though it's like a battleground um for for them to advocate what they what they want and, and and how they want things done, and I suppose the fact that a mother has to, you know, they realize that 
they're not number one here. It's it's baby that's number one. They're they're, they're second to this, and they're going into a a very heavy medical situation. Um, so then having to do that, the trauma that may come from it, um, you know, going through errors and errors and errors of of pain, um, giving a baby that you're expected to to look after, you come home, and then you know after going through all that kind of stuff having to 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 um be responsible for a baby it's a lot it's it i didn't think it was going to be as as difficult and you always have the lovely little moments where you know all the hard work is worth it but then you have to go back to the to the struggle and then you have the you know you, you're still trying to be a couple at the end of the day um, I always I found the big eye opening thing was that it's as though you start a relationship with a work colleague and your job is to look after baby, and that's your new relationship. But you also have another relationship where you're you know in love with one another and you remember all the thing you know the, the old things and so it it's just such a life changing thing. Um, and don't get me wrong, I wouldn't change it for the world. And if I'm lucky enough to have another kid, I would bite your hand off <laughs> but it, it's it, it, it it's a struggle and it's it, again it's it's stuff that just isn't really spoken about even from a dad's perspective and you know you, you spoke about your husband there in the first year and little things like going back to work after two weeks uh coming back home and cooking meals you know that there was i spoke to a dad there recently um and we were kind of saying that you, there's an element where you do feel as though you're a breadwinner at the end of the day you're coming home and you're just earning money to kind of maintain the roof over the head and you're kind of wondering is that all i am so then it leads to more questioning and blah 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 blah. but i do think that the more you talk about things i know it's such it's such a simple thing to say just talk about it you know have a conversation with people and your husband was unfortunate enough that he couldn't probably with the group of friends that you was with and i'd be the same um within my group of friends i have one other friend that has a kid now but, but uh, his child would be i think seven so i i don't really have that kind of i i can't i have stuff built up inside of me that i'd love to say but i can't um but this has been a great media a, a great platform to be able to to talk about this kind of stuff and i do think that as i say there's a, a niche out there for it Absolutely. Has this journey, um, you know, starting the Instagram account and things like that, has it led you to find other male uh, fathers that are feeling similarly? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, there's one guy in particular there. He has a, a page called From, From Lads to Dads. Uh, yeah, he's uh, he's based in Dublin. I haven't met him yet, but, um, you know, he we, we, we talk. Um, there There's a couple more people who have a few kind of training courses that they do for for dads and expecting dads and how to support their partners and stuff like that but again where where i see my niche uh would be from an education point of view i think um definitely educating dads um and from the the doula perspective of trying to kind of create that environment where it's about you know, offering my service to to try and help people kind of overcome the struggles that I would have had. Now, the struggles that I had, they weren't, you know, they weren't so bad that I'd look back and I'll say to myself, oh God, that was such a terrible time. But if I could have even someone just there for me to just to say, look, it's going to be grand um, do this, this and this and you'll be fine. Or here's a few people that you can talk to. Uh, I do think that would definitely uh, help me. But I do see there are a lot more dads out there that are talking. Um, sometimes it can be easier to talk to someone over an Instagram or a, a, an email or a Twitter as opposed to your direct friends because maybe sometimes they're just not in that same bubble as you, you know. So yes. I do think that there is more, more, a, a, a more of a male perspective coming, but not enough. I don't think it's enough. And I think, again, as I say, it, females are a lot better at, at, at talking about this kind of stuff as opposed to most men. But don't you feel like that's actually probably one of your biggest challenges is because there is this kind of idea that 
women are the better talkers and they can talk about their feelings and men are expected to just kind of get on with things and not ever express or talk or sometimes even be in touch with their emotions when actually that could be the healthiest thing for them. Yeah, definitely. And even just from the doula course that I done, a lot of it was about kind of looking at yourself and they look at a lot of, you know, meditation. They look at a lot of kind of, you know, self, um, self-help, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, getting in touch with your emotions and, um, you know, little things like, you know, crying, laughing, whatever it might be. Uh, I suppose stereotypically men can be like that. And I do think it's a big defense mechanism. I think it's because um, men and dads probably feel as though they can't show any weakness. Um, even, you know, I think about dads that have gone for me and, you know, naturally enough, you see it in movies. What are they? They're big and strong and they kind of teach you right from wrong. And that's all very well and good, but there's an element, you know, I think as a humans, we're, we're, emotional people and I don't think that um dads it's not as though they don't have emotions they do um but they probably struggle to 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 express it and I think from an from an education point of view if you were to show people the benefits of it this is what can happen you're not weak by by showing your emotions or talking about things you really aren't um you know the benefits there are very plain to see so I think, you know, sometimes maybe as, as, as men, we can be very, um, we learn a lot from results and experience and, you know, you do, you know, one plus one equals two, you're going to understand it maybe a little bit more. <laughs> so maybe if uh, there are a few more examples and I have heaps of examples and I can use myself as, as, as that for, for one struggling with the likes of confidence as a dad, for example, and the only way that I got around that, well, I remember I'd be someone's lying in bed, you know, and you're going through your own thoughts and you're saying, you're questioning your ability to be a dad. And then you're questioning, I'm questioning Ezra's the rest of his life. And geez, am I going to be a failure and this, that, and the other. But you wake up the next day, you say, right, I'm going to tackle this head first. And when I mean tackle, I mean talk about it. Talk to Leah about it. Talk to my mom about it. Talk to whoever. And geez, afterwards, you feel great you know and there's no there's no magic to it but it's just about kind of um looking into yourself a little bit more and kind of um as well as that understanding that you're not you're not weird for thinking these things these are natural things that happen and should be addressed because if you don't address them it'll turn into something a lot bigger absolutely and i was actually that's the perfect lead into what i was going to say next which is i was really surprised to learn just how affected dads are by like postnatal depression because I'd always thought that was more of just something that moms dealt with you know that mothers dealt with because the fluctuation of hormones and things like that but actually there are plenty of fathers that actually deal with postnatal depression as well and I think if I think as the statistics go if um, their partner is facing postnatal depression they're even that much more likely to experience it themselves so I think it really like men need services. They need to have resources that they can lean into or depend on or um, enjoy even, you know, just to have a lighthearted laugh sometimes about the things that you do run into as a parent. So I think it's fantastic, like what you're doing and the world can only get better by more people like yourself um, getting educated, offering that education out to the world and providing resources. So I just, I think it's fantastic. Well done yeah, to no, you for that. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, and I think, again, the change that I would like to see, uh, again, talking about my direct experience and all dads across Ireland, what happens is you do an antenatal class. That's probably, um, again, we were in lockdown, so it's just through a video on YouTube. You do an antenatal class. And um, if you want to go above and beyond, you may do a hypnobirthing class or you may do uh you know a first aid and that's it and then you know you're going into the hospital and then it's it's full steam ahead and a point that you made there actually was very important i i I think is the um when it it comes to a mother going through a postnatal depression um which leads into the dad maybe going through that as well again relationship health i think is such a huge thing and again it can be neglected a lot um 
And I always find that if, if like, I, I, I'm always going back to the, to the point that for me, I think I, the mother has a really, really, really tough job to do. And having to do all that in addition to having to, to worry about the relationship, it's just something that shouldn't be even thought about. It, 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 you know, the relationship should be there and it should be, it should be worked on and it should be in the best shape that it can be. Um, and then once that happens, then it allows you to, to move on to, you know, looking after baby and stuff like that. And that may sound maybe selfish in, in, in a way because ultimately baby is number one. But you have to look after that relationship because you can see the breakdown of most um, uh, relationships. And a lot of the time it can be down to the stress of having a child. And that it, 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 can, it, can, it can be a lot different. It doesn't have to be that way. Um, so I think the more you can spread that kind of information, maybe the more families you could save as well. And then giving child the benefit of having their mom and dad in the same household. Absolutely. We actually have a, a psychosexual and relation therapist coming on as a podcast guest in July. So go. I've already um, recorded that episode and I'm excited for that to go out into the world too, because like you said, it's just so important because as much as you become parents, you still are also partners. Um, so it's, mm -hmm. it's just so, so important. And uh, you mentioned it there earlier, which is about, you know, dads getting that kind of two week break from work and then back to work, mm -hmm. they go, that's actually something that I'm super passionate about. If I, you know, I love supporting breastfeeding and that's a beautiful thing that I'm connected to. But the other thing that I really would love to see is for, you know, whether it's a male partner or a same sex partner who is, you know, in that relationship that is a parent of the child to get equal maternity leave or parental leave. Um, Cause I really think that maybe the pandemic's shown us this, maybe it hasn't, but I do think that children benefit from having both parents around, especially in those early months or early years. So I'm curious to know what your thoughts are on that. Yeah, uh, I suppose it would be probably very similar to yourself. Um, I. The, the line of work that I'm in, we do a lot of work in the Scandics in Scandinavia and uh, they have a completely different uh, system where the, the mother and father will get six months each, um, which is fantastic. I think it's brilliant. I think it allows you to uh, build a foundation with your, with your new family in a relaxed way, as opposed to probably the way I seen it was, okay, we have two weeks to do x y and z get whatever we need to get done done and then we're kind of back into because yeah i suppose if anyone's listening who who doesn't have, have a kid a lot of it's like you just don't have time to do anything is what i feel <laughs> now the way i have a kid i don't have time to do anything so it's as though it's a bit rushed and i think for something like that such a milestone it shouldn't be and sometimes you may within that rush make a mistake that may fester that may lead into you making more mistakes um because I, for me if i if like anything in life if you do it rushed a lot of the time it's not going to be done uh as best as you can um from in terms of how, how you feel and stuff like that it is back to the point of feeling as though you're you're the you know your sole purpose is to bring money in and that's um and again, that, that can go both ways. It doesn't have to be a dad. It can be, you know, a lot of the time it could be the mother who's going back to work as well. Uh, and the dad staying at home. And there's an element of feeling, it's weird. If you stay at home, you probably feel like you're a failure. And if you go into work, you feel like you're a failure. So it's kind of like a lose-lose situation. But that's kind of how you feel. Um, but again, if there's people that I can talk to, uh, to kind of say, look, it's, it's fine. This is how I done it. And there's strategic ways that you can, that you can help the situation from a, you know, parental leave, that kind of stuff, taking extra holidays. <clears throat> but I'd love if there was more of a, of something putting stone to say, look, this is how much time that you have. Uh, because, you know, I think with employers, a lot of the time you, you may feel as though you're kind of stuck in, in between a rock and a hard place where you want to stay at home. You want to, you know, spend as much time with your family as you can, but you also want to, you know, keep your your employers happy. Uh, you don't want to annoy them because without a job, you can't afford what you what you love to do. And that's being you know within a family. So it's a catch twenty two. 
Um, but I think the answer to all that is um, giving dads or whoever is going back to work that time of, okay, this is what it is, it's six months and that's it. And you can see it works in other countries. I think in Ireland, but when I first heard of lockdown, I was thinking, Jesus, it's going to be a disaster. People aren't going to work. But you can see, you know, the statistics show that it does work. So I think that if stuff is put in place where, you know, there's a, a common goal um, and a common kind of understanding to the benefits of it, I think people will will jump at it and, and, and it will work. Um, and it's funny, just one last point there that I make out in a... Um, um, an event with a couple of doulas there a few about a month ago and it was myself uh, and another uh, mother who was part of the same sex <coughs> uh, marriage and she went back to work and she felt the exact same way that I felt and it was pretty amazing to hear from a female and me being a male doing the same thing and kind of saying that Jesus we're actually really like here aren't we you know what I mean the, you know people might think that's different all if you're, you know, mothers have certain feelings and dads have certain feelings, but we actually don't a lot of the time. It's all just, you know, everyone kind of feels the same way. It's just the environment that you're kind of being put into. I agree. And the thing that really struck me whenever you were talking was, you know, this feeling of if you stay home, you're a failure. If you go back to work, you're a failure. And it was interesting to hear you say that as a male, as a father, because I think a lot of women feel that and I've never really heard it expressed from the male perspective. So like you said, I think there are more commonalities there than maybe we've thought before. Mm. And another thing that I guess we chatted about in the lead up to this episode um, was this idea of the absent father and mm -hmm. how you said you feel like that stereotype is kind of fading away. I do too, but I'd love to hear you maybe chat just briefly on that stereotype and how you feel is changing or what you see that makes you think that that's going away yeah yeah um I suppose for, uh, talk about my own experience I'd say from it, it's been the, the way I've been reared um it's my family and my friends I feel that if I were to, to, to turn around to them in in a week to say I had enough and, and I'm off you know, I went to go buy a pack of cigarettes and never came back. You know, that's stereotypical. I mean, <laughs> I, mean I don't think we laugh. I know it's not actually me. funny and like, in yeah, it's not funny. It's <laughs> not funny, but you yeah. know, that's the, that's what the movies depict sometimes. Yes. But um, if that were to happen, they would be, you know, they'd be probably, they wouldn't be friendly with me, you know, um, <laughs> Uh, it's the wrong thing to do you, you, you can't do that you know it's one of those ones where you know when uh, when you're brought up you're brought up to you know to, to not hit a female these kind of things that are just things that you don't do and I think the absent father is dying out and I think it's probably because again I'll have to put everything down to education and um, you, you know you can see the benefits of it from from the the dad being there is such a huge thing for the the development of a kid you know sometimes i i might be out in a social situation and someone may bring up some of the trauma that they've been through when they were growing up and um a lot of the time it's down to um you know they may bring up the fact that maybe their dad was absent and i feel it's such a shame to hear about someone who's they could be 40 years of age and it's still hitting them hard now, you know, and I suppose, again, I haven't been, I've been fortunate enough not to have experienced that, but um, it's a real tough thing. And I, again, I would say it's, it's down to the education of it and seeing the, you know, I think as a dad, you just, it's something that you have a real great opportunity here to, to raise a kid, raise it beautifully give it the best chance of life that you can give it and I suppose I even said whatever it being a dad or being a parent that's you know you can do all these different things or whatever but I think if you're if you're just there if you're present 100% of the time well then that's a really really good thing but, you know whatever about support and breastfeeding whatever about making perfect meals whatever about you know playing but if you're present if you're there and you're giving your kids that kind of security that, okay, you know, I have both parents here. I'm in good hands. 
Um, I think that's that's where it comes from. But it, I think it it is fading out. I can even see people, you know, um, in disadvantaged areas or people who may have had a really tough upbringing, you know, and you know, naturally enough, the cycle will repeat itself. But it feels like it just doesn't. And I don't know. Maybe it's kind of what I'm viewing, but I can see people really stepping up. And it's not as though, oh, you know, fair play to him for stepping up. He's around for being a dad. It shouldn't be like that. It should be, you know, bringing a kid into a really loving environment and just making the most of it. And again, that's why a lot of the posts that I, can, that I might put up is just about that, the relationship side of things and making sure that that relationship and the foundation is correct um, before anything else. I think that that's- I also wanted to add on one of your previous points, you know, I'm such a beneficiary of my husband's father was home. He, he worked from home and he's an architect, is an architect. And so he was around to help with the family. You know, he and his wife were both contributing members of the family on a day in and day out basis. And so I have a husband who does that quite naturally. You know, it's not like he has to see that that is a possibility from seeing other people out in the world like he just saw that model to him in the house and so I think like you said like as this absent parent or absent father thing falls away and more people see what it's like to have both parents be involved and to be at home it actually sparks a lot of positivity for future generations for the kids that are seeing that they go on to be partners so it's just um totally agree with you there about it being beneficial yeah no for sure um it's funny how you say that you you know the architect being at home. My dad was a gardener. <laughs> okay. And he used to he used to do gardens maybe in the morning, um, and then when we come back from school, then he'd be kind of there cooking, you know. Yes. And then my mother would be the one that would come home, and I remember it was a it was probably a, a relationship where you know we couldn't wait for our mother to come home because we haven't seen her all day. Whereas normally a lot of the time it can be the you know, it, it's, 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 it's different. Whereas normally it's dad coming home. So there are certain things that I kind of learn in, in, in that way. Um, one funny thing there is that I can't stand mashed potato. Because <laughs> all it was when we were growing up was mashed potato, mashed potato in different shapes, sizes, whatever it was, it was just mashed potato. And I just can't eat it anymore. <laughs> That's not because it's a it's uh it was like it wasn't a traumatic experience eating potato. I'm just sick of it, you know. <laughs> I think my dad was obviously a big fan. <laughs> um, so to everyone listening around the world, uh, an Irishman who does not eat potatoes. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's what what Irishman not eating potatoes? <laughs> oh my goodness! Well, thank you for sharing that about you know like your dad being able to be home as well, um, mm. because it you know. We're, we're hearing you speak about your experiences and you seem to be very involved as well. So it's kind of like what I was saying, I think it bodes well for future generations and future partners yeah. Yeah. of the kids. I'm so blessed. I will put my hand up and say, I have the most amazing husband. He yeah. contributes, he's a partner, true partner in life. And he's such a dad, you know, he's so yeah. present for our children. So it's fantastic. And even just as you say that, I'm sure, you know, you probably, you're able to go to bed at night, just kind of, you know, it, with the confidence to kind of know like that that's great that you have that you know yeah. i sometimes think of my worst thought would be going to bed at night not knowing what the other person beside you is thinking and how they're feeling about it and it's just ne- just negativity and i just couldn't think of anything worse and then when you think you know you talk about the responsibility of having a kid having to deal with that and then trying to rear your child as best you can and then you feel terrible because you feel as though you're not giving your kid maybe the best opportunity. It's just, it's kind of heartbreaking. So I'm really happy that you're not in that situation. And I'm uh, really happy that I'm not in that situation either. So fantastic. Thank you so much. And I'm so happy for you as well. That it's just, yeah, it puts your mind so much at ease. Mm. Um, at, we've talked about your experiences, you know, in becoming a father. We've talked about some of your experiences that you had uh, growing up. But I'm curious to know with the doula training, if we can go back to that, what you like, how you view your role, like what you see that you're able to bring to the table for families as a postpartum doula. Yeah, uh, something actually that I've been working on over the last while. Um, I think, again, it's the perspective of things. Um, 
and I, I, I use the word perspective with, with a lot of emphasis. Um, I think that from a postpartum uh, thing or period, um, even when I was in the postpartum, the first two weeks, first six weeks, first six months probably, um, I really didn't understand the, the struggle of it from a, a female perspective. Um, and I think that that's where I can really help um, because I think that there's a lot of social pressure on on a, on a mother to be out walking three days after, you know, uh, with their kid after going through that. Or there's a lot of pressure on having to, to wear certain things and to be wearing makeup and visitors and all this kind of stuff. And I think, I think a lot of the time, um, you know, the mother wants to look after their 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 baby and i'd love for to talk to the dad and kind of say to dad listen you need to be the one to you know kind of stamp your authority on look this is what's going to happen you know visitation wise no we're going to leave that for the moment this is what we're going to do um food you know cooking food uh breastfeeding support this is how you're going to do it um sleep rest um, whatever it is, there's loads of stuff that you can you can kind of educate them on and help them on as well. Because I get that it's all very well, well and good talking about it, but saying it to a new dad and then having the time to do it is another story. Um, but if you have someone there to help, I think it's it just makes it a lot easier. So it's really what what, what I think I can bring to the table is to kind of show that perspective, and I think that. Again, if the dad is getting involved, a lot of the time, you know, particularly from, from breastfeeding, sometimes the dad feels as though I'm not involved in this. So, you know, and then that knocks their confidence and they, then they get low. And then the mother is looking and she's saying, oh, geez, he's not happy because he's not getting involved, but you're on breastfeed. But it doesn't have to be like that. I think you can, you can be as important and as influential in a breastfeeding journey as a dad. Um, as, you know, you have, you have a huge role to play there. I think that's kind of where it comes at, or, you know, education on, on labor, education on early labor. And, um, you know, again, we're talking the absent dad thing. I don't think that there's any dads out there that are, you know, falling asleep uh, in, in the labor theater anymore. I think that that's kind of dead and gone a little bit. Um, or even little tips, like I remember one of the things I made a mistake on so much was, you know, I was saying to myself, don't, you know, don't panic, don't panic when we're in early labor and, you know, that, because that's going to have an effect on your baby and your partner. But sure, sure enough, don't you get into the car and you're flooring it down the, the motorway trying to get there as fast as you can. And But, you know, I, I'd love to educate myself and say, you don't have to do that. Take it easy. By the time you get into the hospital, you're going to have so long to go. It's a huge journey. So just relax on it. Um, and then also, um, I suppose the, the, the parts on, um, you know, being a dad, for, uh, I think a lot of it is actually, there's a lot to do with showing options that parents have and that dads have, and that they have a huge role to play, like, um, sleep, you know, for, for the kids sleeping, um, co-sleeping, um, uh, from their diet, from their own sleep themselves um and another one as well is like about keeping an aspect of your old life and and bring it into your new life because i think one thing and i'm sure you as a mother kind of uh, experience was that you do come out of the hospital and you feel as though the person that you were when you walked into the hospital is gone you know it, it's it's a distant memory and it, it is gone, you know, it, it, it's completely changed, but there are aspects of that that you can, you can bring forward. And same with the dads, you know, from a, from a physical health point of view, from kind of keeping in shape, from eating well, drinking water, not looking so tired, uh, <laughs> little things like that. I agree about, um, you know, like the, the change in identity that you face. And I think dads face it too, as you said, it's like, I have two children, four and almost two. And it's like, I feel like I'm just now really stepping into my identity again of like who I'm meant to be. I was mm. very much just mother for a long time. And now I get to be like mother and myself. You know, I get to have that yeah. piece for myself, like you said. And part of that is 
having the business, you know, having my own business where I can feel my creativity and, and be of service to others outside of my family. I find it's really, it's really good for me. So. Mm. It's funny how you say, you know, you have a four-year-old and two-year-old and it's taken you to this point, which is four years yes. you know, to get to a point where you feel as though you have, you know, you, you have a bit of self-worth as well as your, your family. And I suppose I just want to really highlight that because I think it's a common saying that anything in life that's worth having, it's, it's, it's hard work, you know. And I think that that's a, a great example, really, because now you're kind of at a stage where you have two beautiful things, but in order to get there, it takes a lot of time. I'm sure that there's a lot of you know sleepless nights and a lot of crying and a lot of struggles to get there. But once you get there, it's it's fantastic, you know. But um, fair play to you. Thank you. Yeah, it's like stepping outside the countryside and taking that, that first big deep breath of fresh air. It's like when you finally get to that space where you feel like you have a bit of harmony and things mm. are, are going really well. And like you, for me, like I've got the strong partner, I've got the parenthood, which is still challenging. I won't, oh, yeah. you know, I won't say it's not I've got, you know, a business, which is something for myself and I've got me and mm. like, it, it took time to get there. And so for anyone out there who's listening and they're going through it, you know, they're at those early stages and they're feeling challenged and they don't know when they'll find their identity again or where, where it went or, um, yeah, like let it be a ray of hope that it's possible. You know, mm. like it, it's purely a possibility. You just have to keep going. For me, consistency and persistence to con- just continue to show up was really big for me. Just continue to show up, whatever that might look, look like. Some days I might be really great at showing up. Other days, not so much, but I still showed up. And so I had to allow that grace for myself along the journey so if it's if if that is of any help to anyone I'm happy to share that (laughs) yeah no for sure and I think one of the words there that you use is uh um, persistence and perseverance and um I think I'm sure now you can look back on it and you can say well I'm I'm glad I didn't give up uh because there's nothing worse than than that and to be able to kind of sit back and enjoy the the fruits of it all but it's even funny sometimes I um I find when it comes to and maybe for any listeners out there uh, rather than giving up on anything and I suppose you can use the same for parenthood um, I look back at let's say the struggles that I've had and it's and, and now I'm past that let's say for example and um, I look back at it and it's more, it's not really about getting there it's not about getting here and being able to look back and say oh I'm glad that that's done I look back at the journey in a way and I look back at it in a in a, in a positive way uh, because as cliche as it sounds it is about the journey it's not about where you want <clears throat> it's not about the end goal and 99% of the time the journey is a, the fun part when you look back at it when you look back at it from a bird's eye view and you say oh, what, what, it was a bit of bit of fun a bit of crack <laughs> even though at the time it wasn't <laughs> yes absolutely it's like it's the growth that you go through along the journey and the expansion of who you are that like makes where you are now so much better it's like it makes the now better because of the journey because of the experiences so definitely and even um i think breastfeeding is a is a good example of that where you know you can see a lot like she's this this statistics are shocking you know they're really bad and it doesn't it doesn't have to be like that and i think that the you know a lot of the reason why it is is just that again there's lack of support there but also the fact that it's 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 hard it's difficult and it's for something that people think is so natural it's actually not it it, it, it comes very unnatural for some people because of just the physiology of it but i think you know it can be very easy to to, to give up on it and kind of you know blame support stuff like that and there's a lot to be said for that but with perseverance and stuff like that you will look back at it and you say geez i'm glad i done that you know yeah. and the personal growth that you go through as well We've got a book of breastfeeding stories. Actually, we've been working on since end of 2019 and all throughout 2020 and this year as well. But that's the whole point of that book is to share so many different perspectives and experiences Mm. so that people can feel not alone in it. You know, they Mm. can feel not alone in the challenges or the struggles or, you know, they can read a story and say, oh, I see so much of myself in that. And they Mm. got through it. So that's evidence that maybe I can get through it, too. So that's our hope with that. 
I, I want to talk about your podcast before we go, because mm. you've got a podcast yourself. So what can people yeah. expect to find there? Yeah. So on the pod- podcast, again, it's kind of back to my own experience, different things from helping dads out to mainly support and be as best a dad as they can. <clears throat> I've done podcasts on the likes of uh, what to expect on your 20 week scan, what to expect in your 12 week scan, what questions you should ask, you know, and again, it's just one less worry for mother. Mother has enough to be worrying about. And I think that if you can show a bit of initiative and a bit of look, these are questions that I'm going to ask. Your partner's going to be really, really happy with you, you know, and it just gets you to a point where you're just more involved as opposed to being the, oh, I'll tag along and I'll just wait in the, in the background and sure, I'll let the mother talk to the doctor and, and it shouldn't be like that. You know, it should be an experience that's shared. Um, I'm actually doing one that's going to come out on Sunday, about, uh, breastfeeding support as a partner. Um, I talk about, you know, again, dad initiatives about, you know, what you do or what you can do when you find out that you're going to be a dad. You know, I'm doing one a week. Um, now, the podcast is just me alone uh in a bit of a blind boy kind of style uh which i hope to evolve um as i move forward and <clears throat> kind of have guests on or you know and hear things from different perspectives of dads particularly on the mistakes that they make because it's all very well and good talking about all the, the great things that you do and you know talking about that but I, I, I think that you can learn a lot more from the mistakes that you make and i'll look back at the mistakes that i've made and i'll say right I'm going to not make the same mistakes if, again, if I'm blessed enough to have a second kid. But then and the second kid's going to come on, I'm going to make other mistakes. And that's just life. And that's just the way it is. But if there's some things that I can pass a message on to some new dads, some expectant dads, uh, to kind of say, right, he, he made this mistake. I won't. Or I'll, I'll, I'll think maybe three seconds longer than he did. And I'll try not to make that mistake. Um. But again, the focus of it really is just for support as, as best you can and uh, optimizing your role as a dad. I think that's a, a big one because it's, it's such a huge role, such an important role. Um, and it would be, it's such a shame to see people look back at it and not give it their, their best shot. So that's what I'm hoping, or that's what the podcast is about. Um, can you share the name of the podcast for anyone who might be wanting to look for it? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for that. Yeah, it's called The Dad Pal. Uh, it's simple as that it's my instagram uh that's going to be my website name uh it's going to be i was even having aspirations of being a doula and having a little fiat 500 and <laughs> having the dad pal on the and showing dads how to put in the car seat and all that kind of stuff so um yeah that's what the the, the aim is and uh, if i get there i'd be very privileged and if you have any bit of time they're only 20 about 20 minutes long uh the the episode so it's not too too long and uh you can skip past some of the 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 ramblings that i that i can do and maybe just listen to from you know 10 to 15 minutes and then that's probably (laughs) all you need (laughs) i can imagine like uh partners passing it off to their partner and saying here listen to this i can also imagine females that want to listen in to hear the male perspective because it's something that's kind of a mystery you know there's not a lot of it out there so I think this is why people are so interested in you becoming a male doula and so interested in you being a a parent that's speaking about his experiences yeah and it's funny I've had some people kind of get in touch with me um again females asking me about the course and how they find it or how I found it and how um you know, they, they want to go into the birth dueling thing and asking me for my own, you know, perspective on it. And, uh, you know, sometimes I feel like a bit of a fraud because it's not as though I've been doing it this long or, or there's some parents out there who've been parents for 10 years and they probably know so much more than me. Uh, so you, you can feel a little bit of a, of a fraud at times, but um, I do, I, I understand where the interest comes from. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, even from speaking to friends of mine about what I'm doing, uh, there's definitely, I suppose there's there's a curiosity, but I think the more you kind of think about it, the more you can kind of see the the need for it as well. And I remember the the person who I got the training off was uh, she's a great woman. Her name is uh, 
Lucretia. Um, <laughs> yeah, she she does she runs uh, the AIMS the A A I M S in Ireland, and she just she's incredible. Like, I mean, she's kind of one of these people that was just born to do what she does. Um, but the first conversation I have her on the phone just about being a doula and stuff like that. And she she was saying she. I just came out of three appointments with clients there this week and you know a good 50 percent of what i was there for was support for the dad you know there is a, a real need for it and i think that if you can break down that barrier of you know mr macho dad you know i'm too strong to be talking about my feelings on grand or you know I, I, no one has to worry about me the further you break that down i think the the better and look not every everyone's going to struggle. I mean, it's not a case where everyone's going to need this kind of stuff. They, most people won't. Um, but there are some people that do and they'll see, they'll see, great, ben uh, they'll see great benefit from it. And you can see from the female do that, like I had a, a cousin of mine, um, he, he's in a same-sex marriage and he used a doula and he said the benefit that he got out of it was unbelievable. And I didn't even know that he uses a doula. So like th there's, th there's things out there. There's like, great examples out there where you can see the benefits. So who knows where I, I might be, but for so far anyway, I'm just enjoying it. And just the people that I'm connecting with are fantastic people. And I think again, as I say, this is a, um, a prime example of it. Well, thank you so much. And I've enjoyed the, the conversation thoroughly. Um, the last question that I want to ask is, you know, wildlife photography, we're all about living life in a way that outlives us, you know? So I'm curious to know what you hope your legacy will be either through the parent that you're being to Ezra, the partner that you're being to Leah, or, you know, just through the people that you're able to serve through being a doula, like what types of things do you hope to leave in your wake? Yeah, no, uh, uh, well, you gave three examples there, so I'll try all three. Um, <laughs> I think from, from a perspective of being a doula, for, for me, what I'd love to do would be to to change uh probably the way education is given um from you know from the expectant dad kind of thing to to being or to getting into the postpartum stage and what i mean education i just mean getting dads more involved um <clears throat> highlighting the benefits of having dads getting like being that support um uh showing that that as a dad you being there you do you kind of this the things that are probably now considered going above and beyond that they're not really going above and beyond these are the things that you should really be doing so the likes of hypnobirthing the likes of breastfeeding support the likes of first aid and um, all these kind of classes and basically optimizing dads out there because i think that there there's a lot of dads out there that are probably not um showing their full potential and i think a lot of it is to do with just just from history of it you know from the in general it's the mother who's very involved and <clears throat> as a dad you're you know the most important thing that you can do is to earn loads of money and make sure that everyone at home is happy and that's not the way it should be can I just add there, Shane, yeah. I'd love to see also as men become more proactive in the family life and in appointments and things like that. I'd also love to see service providers treat them with equal respect to their partners mm. so that they're not treated like, oh, you're just the Egypt, sorry, who's sitting yeah. beside your partner and you don't matter. Because I think that that is, that's an old way of being that needs to be uh, gone away very soon. It, it could just, uh, anyway. <laughs> No, that's a whole absolutely. other episode in itself <laughs> yeah no it is but no it, it's it's true uh, and even th there there were some appointments that i probably felt as though i was the the, the egypt in the corner you know in a way now there's no one calling me in egypt but you kind of get that you know you, <laughs> yes. you, you kind of understand that okay this is my role here and it's very easy then for dads to kind of feel all right then if this is the way that the authority or you know the the medical people are treating me well then this is the way it is you know and when it comes to the important things like you know uh getting really involved at home where it's really important when it's just you as a family um oh sure well i'm just a person in the corner i don't want anything to do with that i don't want to help with x y and z and i think it's a 
it's a very lazy excuse for some people to kind of fall into that trap yeah um so yeah no it's a good point um i think from um from Leah's perspective again i think the best thing for me would be i love to show ezra what it's really like to be in a loving relationship that this is the way we think that a loving relationship is and again have confidence in that and you know all relationships take maintenance you know it's there's a lot of work that goes into it and i think that it's important to to work on that and not just be ignorant towards it and say oh we'll be grand you know we'll be fine sure we just love each other naturally and that's it i feel as though a good relationship just takes work like i mean i look at some of the old motorcycles out there the vintage motorcycles and the amount of time and effort people put into it to make sure that it runs correctly after all these years make sure that it's not going to break down on them that it's reliable it's like a relationship it's like it, it gets old but the older it gets you know things just need to be kind of oiled and, and need to be you know filters need to be put into it and stuff like that um but if you look at some of these old vintage motorbikes that go down the road, you look at them and you say, like, wow, that's a beautiful bike. And sometimes I look upon old relationships that are 20, 30 years old and I say, wow, that's amazing. You know? So I think that if, again, if I continue on that road that I'm doing now in a very thankfully loving relationship, um, that's what I want to, 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 to achieve with, with my partner. And then with Ezra, obviously for him seeing that is fantastic, but sure. I think, again, I can be very, um, I know a lot of my explanations can be very long-winded, but I can be very short-winded in the answer to, to how, like, Ezra to see me, and that's just being a great dad, and I'd love for, for him to be able to, you know, be an adult and say, I can't wait to be a dad, and I can't wait to get involved like my dad did, um, and maybe not make some of the silly mistakes that he made, because... <laughs> I just sometimes just make mistakes and that's it, but it's about admitting it, you know, and being able to be comfortable with that, you know, and I think so far he seems like a really happy kid and I get a lot of enjoyment out of it. And um, I put a lot of that down to the work that Leah does. Um, I do work as well, don't get me wrong, but um, uh, that's where I'm at on, on Ezra and he's just a joy. I think any parent, look, you know yourself, the kids are your your joy you know they just change everything about you <clears throat> change your life and um i'm just so grateful to have him so uh and uh, that's kind of what i can say about him he's a great little boy <laughs> well I, I can definitely envision in the future you know when he if he chooses to become a parent one day you like having the chats and laughing and the great thing is he might have things like this to look back on and listen to mm. and hear what it was like for you to to be a new dad so yeah. I think that's just amazing yeah and likewise sure with your uh your two young youngsters they can look back at your the photography in your podcast and kind of listen to how you were feeling and the admiration that you have for not only them but also your partner as well that's a it's a huge thing you know the fact that even they can go to bed at night now kind of saying oh geez I feel really confident in knowing that you know, there's nothing like I can. I, sometimes I think, but you see it in films and stuff. You know, kids going to bed, hearing an argument or hearing, you know, that kind of uncertainty, that weighs heavy enough on them, and I'm sure it creates a bit of anxiety and just not not a pleasant experience. And I think when you're a little kid, I think as much as you can, you should try and they should be experiencing as much pleasurable experiences as possible. Don't get me wrong, there's going to be hiccups along the way. Yeah. I think the more you can minimize those and um, that kind of environment, the better. Well, thank you, Shane. It's been such a pleasure. Thank you for, um, like, I feel like just even through this chat, my own appreciation for my life, my kids, my partner has just mm. gone through the roof. So thank yeah. you for providing that. And thank you well, for your for time. Sure. No, Ariane, thank you so much. Uh, and uh, I very much list, uh, look forward to staying in contact. And uh great so i hope you have a good day you too shane thank you we hope you've enjoyed the show please feel free to leave a comment or a review to let us know what you've loved about this episode and others like it and if you'd like to be featured on our show or if you know of someone who would be an amazing guest get in touch with us at info at wellfedphotography.com and mention living a life well fed in the subject line